Hi, Alberto. How are you? Hi, hi, Scott. I'm I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I am loving your poster of They Live, which is such a oh. brilliant <laughs> film. I've never seen that print before. That's an amazing print. I don't think I've ever seen that poster before. Yeah, that's why I bought it. It was in one of those trips to LA. There is a nice shop there that they sell these old posters. And I got this one and one from Metropoli. One that oh. is really, really long. That I still don't have a print. <laughs> <good enough. laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that film is so good. So, so good. So, so good, that film. Um, uh, congratulations on your film. Thank you very much. Uh, tell me about uh, how this one came to be, because I know you were involved in the in the short film and uh, with the with the guys, and now you're doing a, a feature film. Yeah, it's it's been quite a wild ride, to be honest, because I shot the the short at the end of 2017. The idea was to shoot a low budget horror feature, but I came across the the script from Lork and Rayleigh, and and I thought this is this is it. This is something that can transfer into a feature very nicely. So we finished the short brought it out into, into the uh, yeah festival circuit. And it did really, really well. And through that is when we started to make all the connections. Um, I got management through through festivals, people interested in the short. And at the time, it was Good Fear was interested in doing a transfer from short to feature. At the end of the day, um, it ended up not happening with them. Um, but uh, we met uh, through my agents, the picture company, uh, in one of these water bottle tours, they call it, when you're a new and upcoming filmmaker, they, they show you around in, in town. And I met Andrew Rona from the picture company, and he was really, really willing to do uh, the transfer to feature because he loved uh, the short film. And then from there, when it was decided to go with him, and he had a, a deal already with Studio Canal in place, Every time three and started moving. Um, and at that time, obviously, COVID hit. And it was uh, a period of uncertainty, I think, not only for my movie, for everyone who had a project at the time. Uh, it was nerve wracking. We didn't know if it was going to happen or it was just going to fall through the net. And when the lockdown finished, everything got accelerated and we, we started straight away working in, in the prep. So that's basically the story. It has taken six years to get here, but it was worth it. And I learned a lot in, in this way. Yeah, that's great. So in terms of when you read this, the original script and then bringing it to, to feature, was it because, you you know, you mentioned there that it's it was seemingly an easy tran transition. Did you did you guys find that that you had you felt you had something at the beginning that even though it was a short that you it wasn't just a case of, oh, we can make this into a feature that it, it kind of would fit. A, a, yeah, a feature when, narrative. Yeah, when I when I read the script from Lorcan, I called him. I think uh, a couple of hours straight uh, after after reading it, and I said, "Listen, I want to do this because I can see a, a feature movie because they, I saw an iconic character and I and I saw a, a setting that I love. I I I I really love magic realism in which you put paranormal things or strange things in in normal situations. So having a witch." that can shape shift uh, in the basement of above for me, it was, yeah, this is right up on my, my alley. So when I read the script, I, I told Lorcan, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the short film, but uh, with the condition that this, this is going to be kind of a proof of concept. Even if it's a really nice close story that works in itself, for me, it was uh, the business card to show our iconic character, the witch, uh, which could be transferred to the feature. Not easily, uh, obviously, as we saw later, but I, but I thought that visually and in terms of the concept, it was something that people would be interested about. And it, I mean, the horror genre itself has been thriving in the last sort of 10 years. I mean, it, it, it always has, but in the last 10 years, it, it feels like people are really kind of hungry to for scary films, but also the fact that these, these scary films aren't just scary films. There's a lot more going on, on underneath. Are they the kind of films that obviously... They, you've got they live poster behind you. Are they the sort of films that you kind of adhere yourself to in the sense that horror films can be more than just about the scares, that there's a lot more to be told, particularly in this film, there's a lot of lot of undercurrents. Yeah, for me, it was always like that. Even when I shot the short and I was asked this question very often, I would say, but I don't understand the question. It's like horror gives you the platform to really explore deep themes going farther than with a drama. Because, okay, in a, in a war movie, you can lose your life. But in a horror movie, you can lose your soul. And that is, that is something that is, uh, has a higher impact. For me, I, 
I think in in the classic, I, I always think that I Alien and the Thing are for me the two top movies in in horror history. Obviously, I I love everything that Carpenter did or Cronenberg. There are many directors who who had an influence for in in me uh, growing up. But I think also, like you said, uh, that the new horror is is almost taking over. Uh, from this classic in terms that is more accepted. It also has to do with fans like ourselves becoming a bit older and having a bit more of a say. Like there is not this snobism looking down on horror. I think Silence of the Lambs took away a lot of that at, at its time, but we have examples like A Quiet Place or Heredit Hereditary. I think Ari Aster is a phenomenal director. Is one of these talents that comes once in a generation. I think those are, are the kind of filmmakers and stories that are really bringing horror into the forefront. Because people can see that there isn't, I mean, you can go in the direction of horror, but at the end of the day, something like uh, Hereditary, A Quiet Place, and even Backhead are, are family dramas. It's all about uh, how the families work and how they have their conflicts and how some things that we do in the past or in the present have such a huge impact. And if you if you add the paranormal element, you can enhance that a little bit more. And I know a lot of directors kind of start in horror, don't they? Because even though you you, you know you make film this the kind of film for a budget, you kind of I guess get left alone and you get to make the story that you want. Do you think it's a good education for filmmakers that to start with a with a horror film? Because you get to explore a lot more things than like you say than than people might do if they were making a different kind of film. I don't know. I I think it's it's good if you like it because I I love it. I I'm a fan of horror movies and I I I want to do more, more things. But I I think I'm going to stick to horror for a while because it's something that I like and what I think I still have a bit more to to tell. Uh, but to start with it, I think it's a combination. It's a combination, as you said. Normally, horror movies and for all for first time directors are on, on smaller budgets. So you are left a bit more alone. You are given a bit more of freedom, even if that change has changed with, with the time. Um, there is also the risk um, that horror films are, are all almost seen as a product, something that, that you are creating. All, all Hollywood movies are, in a sense, a, a product. But the horror movies are, are seen as this low investment, high uh, benefit that, that you can have, that one of those little movies can pay for a lot of the other movies that you make. So that, that you are putting not all your eggs in what basket when, when you do with horror. But in creative sense, yes, of course. Horror allows you a bit more of freedom because you, you can do crazy things and people are going to go with them. Did you manage to, when you started the film to the end and putting it out, out there, did you manage to do everything that you wanted to do, whether it was the score you wanted or, you know, the shots that you wanted or, you know, the, the, the characters, all that kind of stuff. That is wanted. a very good question. And it's, uh, I'm going to try to give you an honest answer. No, uh, you don't. But I think that happens to almost every director when they finish it. Ah, what I did, why do I do this? Why did I do that? Um, but in terms of influence from, from the studio of the producers, I thought um, they were phenomenal uh, during the shooting because, yes, yeah, sometimes they, they put their foot down and they say, you shouldn't do that or you should have changed it or you should change that. But they gave me a lot, a lot of freedom. And I, I saw, for example, that the role of the picture company, Andrew Rona uh, for all and Alex Heinemann, they were more like mentors because it was my first feature. And, and you don't know, they always tell you, oh, it's a little horror movie. Don't worry that much about it. But when you're there, you're completely overwhelmed by the size of it, by the actors, by the VFX, by uh, loads of tracks. These people are listening to you and say, holy macaroni. You know, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, it's not that little for you. So in a sense, I, I, I think I had uh, freedom, but also I have to pay for, for being my, my first movie in terms of not only what I was allowed to do, but also what I thought I could do, because sometimes you restrain yourself because you don't know the process 100%. Obviously, in the next movie, I, I know more, and I, I can try to do things a bit different. But all in all, I, I think it, it was a good balance between uh, being tall and having freedom, I, I would say. Yeah. So, yes. Well, listen, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, Thank my, you. My, girlf my girlfriend saw the trailer and thought it was too scary. So she, <laughs> she said no. <laughs> but I watched it and I really enjoyed it. So I hope it goes really well uh, for you. And so good luck. Thanks so much Thank for your you. time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> 
Hey, that's what they all say. Oh, you go.